moments of joy that I've experienced this year. <sighs> um, you know, <laughs> pause. You mean 2020 or 2021? Like <laughs> what? Ooh, now that one's a little bit of a loaded question because this year has been hell. I think amongst all else is to kind of take your L's and keep moving. Uh, 2020 taught me that I'm a lot stronger than I knew, for sure. <laughs> Living in 2020 and being Black in this specific period, I haven't even processed it. One of my life goals is to travel to every single country on the African continent. So far, I've only hit 39 countries. This question is always like kind of weird to be asked in a work context. Is it like, how personal do I get? Most of the books that I read are all kind of around self-improvement, kind of like bettering yourself. Over COVID, I was bored as hell in the house. So I thought it would be cool to pick up the piano. I've been working on a graphic novel that is kind of finished now that I'm waiting for the illustrator to illustrate. Mostly in my free time, I like to do a lot of music stuff. Uh, I used to like to go to shows, but can't really do that now in the time of the Rona. Well, seriously, I've been doing digital art since I was in ninth grade. And so I'm really passionate about design. Um, well, I'm a YouTube fanatic. I love like testing skincare products, hair products, I'm happy that I, I exist in this year where so much change um, is happening and, you know, change is being pushed forward because we're seeing that now in 2021. Okay, what has kept me going? I mean, the love in my life um, from friends, you know, family. Is a phrase that uh, a friend of mine likes to say. She says that the only way out is through. My son, um, he was calling me literally every hour on the hour when he was up in South Africa. I was getting therapy for a while, but she was not giving me like the uh, action oriented items and just like helping me progress. So I did take the leap and break up with my therapist as bad as I felt. And then I found someone who is a lot better, a lot suited for me. This year I've taken care of myself by um, putting together some pretty strict routines. I do a little would-be meditation. I go for a walk at dawn because the blue light at dawn is the most beautiful thing I know. And then it's time to go to work. This isn't really the first pandemic when it comes to being Black in America, you know, S since we were brought here. Um, most people's stories start in trauma, start in oppression. For me, I would say that means to always have a sense of community and a sense of pride in where you came from. Being Black in America has taught me that um, you have to have like this unwavering resilience. Being Black in America, it's very complex, but at the same time, we, as Black folks, we can pull beauty, ugliness, and a lot of things out of our asses. 17 years, I was not Black in America, I was Black in Japan. And that was a very, very different experience. Coming back uh, as an adult and seeing what race in America is like. Being Black in America is to have a very rich experience, though it be quite painful at times. So while most children are just learning manners and how to tie their shoe or, you know, potty training, I'm having to make sure that my son understands that the fullness in his voice and the sternness in his eyes when he's just being passionate about something doesn't get taken in a way that can end badly. And I just know those conversations are gonna be really, really hard on me um, because I have to tell my son that he's scary to people. And then also in the same breath, have to explain to him that he is none of those things. But what would it mean for us to take care of everybody and to pay attention to everyone and to really be thoughtful about that with or without a pandemic? I mean, like, it, this is the best time to be Black ever. Like, particularly as a Black woman, like, this and any time in the future is the best time to be a Black woman.
racial division takes a huge toll on a person. And that's what we are, we're, we're people. So whatever your perceptions that you were taught from your friends or your family and what they were taught and they were taught, like we are tired of being treated like we're nothing or less than nothing. And we shouldn't have to ask you to be treated like one of your peers. That's exhausting. Being in DC for the inauguration and, and seeing Kamala become the first female, the first person of color uh, vice president was amazing. Everybody was warning me that it might be dangerous. There might be, you know, MAGA people all over the place. Once Biden was sworn in, it was kind of like the sun came out and and everybody, the music started playing in the streets. Everybody was out dancing and just rejoicing that we finally got through what, what the last four years of hell have been. <laughs> It's great to see like Kamala being the vice president and all that stuff, but we need to do uh, more. Dude, just we, I would like to see more, just more, 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 more. Yeah, period. <laughs> what gives me hope is seeing a lot of like Black Gen Z really like understanding that we play such a huge role in this world. I think just knowing that my generation is really pushing for a world where we deserve to live in and where, you know, just knowing that we're breaking generational cycles, I think that's the thing that's really giving me hope. I think people will come out of this just appreciating life a lot more. Um, and I think that's something that's just been terribly missing. Like, I don't think we've valued each other enough. I don't think we've understood that you know, time and life itself is a fickle beast. It's just been a wild ride, man. It's just been a wild ride. And that's really all I can sum it up as, a wild ride, um, but one that we had to get on. It feels good to be a part of the future that we're hopefully building for young Black children where they're not facing as many problems as we did and we're not facing as many problems as the people before us.